I have not gone in depth about astrology. I saw someone in the early chat before we went live say, oh, you're covering astrology again? I've never covered astrology, actually. This is, um, this is something that I've kind of not intentionally put on the back burner, so to speak, but I wanted to really allow the revelation to just kind of flow over the last year or two um, since I've been saved because this was my thing. Astrology was my niche and I didn't want to just jump right into it. I really wanted this to to build, for to, to just really gather that oil, right? Um, and I'm ready to just let that oil overflow tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that this conversation would be edifying for those that are in the astrology practice. Maybe you're a Christian and you practice astrology currently, or you think it's just like a cute little meme or like a cute little personality quirk or whatever. I pray that this would just fill you with godly sorrow that can only come from the Holy Spirit. If you are not saved, if you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, I pray that this would be convicting for your eternity um, and, and for the trajectory of, of the lifestyle that you're currently living and that you would give your life to Christ tonight. And if you're just watching this because you want to learn more about astrology, I pray that you would really, you know, be edified and encouraged and educated on the subject so that you know how to better witness to those in your life who are involved in this evil practice and that um it would it would give you a way to know how to better intercede for them in prayer go to war for them in prayer because you'll know what to pray against and you'll know how to talk to them um, again if you're just getting on please like the video mike come in here watching sweet uh, Nayla's here. Hi, Nayla. Her flight got delayed. She's back in the U.S., everyone. She'll be here in a couple of weeks. Um, TJ. I'm going to add TJ as a moderator. He's here, Mike. Uh, um, and yeah, someone asked me if I would do a video about my eating disorder, former eating disorder that Jesus delivered me from. Yes, I will. I'm thinking next week. If this doesn't end up being a two-part series, which it might. Okay. Well, it's 8.02. Let's give it one more minute for anyone else to come on. Again, if you were able to, um, if you were able to share this to your Instagram story, please do so. Yes, Christine, God has entrusted us with his free will, which we so often use to rebel against him including with the sin of astrology, which God is explicitly clear about. I saw that you had left some contentions above as to why you believe that astrology is nuanced, whereas we know biblically nothing is nuanced because the Lord says you are either for me or against me. You are either partaking of the cup of demons or the cup of the Lord. There is no cup of partiality. We'll get into all that. I am going to talk about how this is I'm going to debunk the myth that astrology is biblical. So on that note, the kind of trajectory of this conversation tonight is going to be, um, boy, this is, sorry, like the, the, the little technological things, because I can't see the chat if that's there, Mike, sorry. Uh, my husband's here tonight. He's here for the first time in, since I started this stream. Anyway, tonight's going to be all about, we're going to start with my testimony with astrology. If you want to hear my full testimony, it's all over this platform, all over Heaven and Healing. And um, I, I've done interviews with Isaiah Saldivar. I've done interviews with Michael Knowles. Um, you can find my testimony all over the place, my full testimony. But definitely look back on this channel for that first. But I'm going to talk about astrology specifically, just as some credentials, so to speak, on the topic. Uh, next, I'll talk about what is astrology. It's Def, it's kind of definition and overall purpose and function. Then I'll discuss the history and origins of astrology, including the difference between astrology and astronomy, because that's necessary. Then I will discuss what astrology really is, which, cheat cheat, is a demonic portal, giving demons uh, full dominion over your life and how it's counterfeit prophecy. And then I will debunk, finally, the myth that astrology is biblical, 
including King Nebuchadnezzar and Star of Bethlehem. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing me to pronounce Nebuchadnezzar properly. It's only taken me two years. Finally, I will end with a prayer at the end for those ready to renounce and repeat of this evil practice on behalf of faith in Christ alone. And if you've ever practiced astrology, this prayer is going to be beneficial for you as well. If you've never received a prayer um, to kind of sever all, all bondage with that practice, with those doors that you may have opened in your life. Um, I will say one thing before I get into this. Please consider partnering with the ministry. Heaven and Healing is entirely crowdfunded. So there are different ways to do that. I did pin a comment. Um, I pinned a comment in the chat where you can click in and support partnering one time or monthly, which is definitely preferred. And then the ways to support the show are going to be in the description after you're out of here later so you can do it now you can do it later just please pray on it consider it as i said this is entirely crowdfunded um i'll always put out free content so if you don't like the idea of doing that you don't have to which is the beauty of it and then the qr code is right here on the screen thank you all so much in advance all righty so my testimony as a former astrologer so how did i get involved with astrology i was in the new age if you don't know already for about a decade and um, astrology was the thing that got me the most. I was absolutely obsessed with it. I was, I was just about as obsessed with it as you could get. Um, and the thing about it is that it made me like the cool girl. Everyone around me knew like I was the astrology girl that they could come to me, just come up to me and say, hey, guess my sign. And I would guess and I would be right. Um, or they could ask me like, hey, am I a good match for this person? Oh, give me your chart and I'll tell you like those kinds of things. It gave me this inflated ego of like, oh, I'm that person, right? I was hosting moon rituals with myself and a group of my new age friends. And, you know, I was always the one kind of responsible for giving the breakdown of the theme of the night. If it was like a, if it was like a new moon in Aries, then I meant that I knew that that meant that would be a night for us to all gather and set our intentions for kind of initiation because Aries is the first sign of the zodiac it's all about initiation if it was say a full moon in I don't know Leo it was all about kind of releasing pride those sorts of things right and again it just gave me an inflated sense of self but more than that it gave me an identity I was really wrapped up in the identity of my astrology um and I really took it on. I really yoked with it. I really had all of my faith in this practice, in this birth chart. It was what I used to call my blueprint. And I used to refer to our birth charts as our, ast our astrological blueprint, um, basically our handbook for life, which now I know is the Bible, of course. But that's really how I saw it. I saw it as this divine blueprint that gave us all the answers that we needed for our personality, our relationships, our finances, our health, our kids, our this, our that, everything. It was my, it was my question and it was also my answer. And I learned from astrology kind of a lot about myself, but I see now in hindsight, it was all about my sin. It was all about the worst parts of myself. But in astrology, it kind of teaches you that concept of shadow work, right? How to integrate those parts of yourself, right? Kind of take the dark with some light sort of thing. And of course, you know, shadow work, that, that concept is essentially inviting you to make friends with demons. That's all that is, right? Embrace the shadows, embrace the darkness. And I was, I was, I was just so deep into it. And, and what that did was it justified my sin that I didn't realize was sin because, oh, I always had, you know, I always had the, um, the justification of, oh, I'm just this way because my birth chart says so. I would never have taken any accountability for it. And you know what, if I did, if I was like, hmm, maybe I, maybe there are a couple things I need to clean up and polish up. Well, I can just use my, my good astrology to do that in place of my bad astrology. So it was always just, it was always just 
I don't know, a, a way for a way for me to again justify the worst parts of myself and then be inflated in all the quote best parts of myself, which really weren't best of myself parts at all because none of it was good. None of it was good. It was just a false identity. It was a false prophecy over my life. And I had this whole podcast. Before I had Heaven and Healing, I had Moon and Back podcast. And that podcast was dedicated to, um, it was dedicated to new moons and full moons. And then in between, it would be some sort of segment about self-healing. Um, now, with that, I would I would write these really elaborate, really extensive moon reports, and then I would give it in a format similar to what I'm doing now, except I was working for the devil and not working for the kingdom of God. So I'm going to get into later how birth charts are a demonic prophecy and the perversion of God's will over your life later, but bear that in mind. That astrology had me doing what I'm doing now, but... I was leading people to hell because I was promoting astrology. I was promoting new age, okay? And honestly, I loved it because I didn't think that's what I was doing. I thought I was helping people heal themselves, which is just a paradox in and of itself. Um, because honestly, like if you have ever practiced astrology or if you're currently practicing astrology, you can't argue with me when I say it's a cycle and it perpetuates you through cycle after cycle after cycle after cycle. And it is exhausting. Astrology is exhausting. It is narcissistic and it's distracting. It is the epitome of the hamster wheel that I always talk about with New Age, which New Age, by the way, is just an umbrella term for all occult practices, okay? All of them. Um, but yeah, it's the it's the hamster wheel of them all. It's the hamster wheel of them all. Astrology is just never ending. And it's because obviously like the moon is always doing its thing and the sun's always doing its thing. We're always going from quote zodiac season to zodiac season. Every day is different astrologically speaking. And so there's always, there's always something new to look at. Every single day when you wake up, I was reading my horoscope like the morning paper right? And and it's just, it just takes you through these cycles, okay? It's like, oh, well, the new moon is all about setting intentions. So, okay, great. I'm going to set my intentions at the new moon. And, oh, well, you know, it's going to be really good for a while. But then by the full moon, two weeks later, I'm feeling really emotional. I have to release some things. Okay, I got to release all that. And then I just got to hang on tight for the next two weeks until the new moon again so that I can feel better and, and set new intentions. It is just... It, it's a hamster wheel. You don't get anywhere. It's pseudotherapy. It's a pseudo solution. Astrology is a pseudo solution because on the surface, you think you have the answers. You think you have the reasoning. You think you have the knowledge to navigate what is going on in your life. But all the astrology does is create a need for you to understand more astrology. Because then, okay, not only do you become obsessed with analyzing your own birth chart, and horoscope on a literal daily basis, but now you're looking into the charts of people around you, right? You're studying the retrogrades and the placements and 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 needing to know how the planets work together and what their patterns are, having to compare all of that against each other to understand the overall themes and focus. And then, of course, you know, you have to look into the correlating houses, which is... Um, different to the 12 zodiac signs. I know it's exhausting and so much. It's 12 houses and 12 signs, right? So that, those all represent a different facet of your life, like travel, business, romance, etc. It's just literally a never-ending cycle of obtaining information and hidden knowledge, like the Garden of Eden, you can be like God, right? But it's all pertaining to the self, to the world around you, and to the future. And lest we be warned heaven because it it, it gives you like a it, it gives you this this false spiritual blueprint for what's going on i used to use astrology as means to understand the quote unquote spiritual war which back then i just thought was good versus evil i didn't realize that it was god versus the devil right so it's endless. Astrology is just 
endless. It's, it's, it's as addicting as it is exhausting. I always say it's a spiritual narcotic. But it's endless divination. Okay? There's no other way to describe it. It is, it is endless divination. Therefore, endless sin. Astrology is sin. Divination, okay, otherwise known as sorcery, it's a non-negotiable with the Lord. It is mentioned throughout both the Old and New Testament, which is evidence to us that it's not one of those things that died with the law when Christ came like eating unclean meat or something like that. Astrology, which is divination, is it's not one of those personal convictions or one of those instances of all things are permissible, you know, because it is repeatedly, I mean, like repeatedly condemned in the Bible. And when we try and justify the astrology practice over God's word, we act more like, we act more like a, a spiritual junkie than we do a disciple of Jesus. So that's just some, that's just some food for thought. Okay. In the Old Testament, the divination of astrology can be best summed up as an abomination that is detestable to the Lord, which are his words, not mine. And then in the New Testament, the divination of astrology can be best summed up as a practice in which those whom partake will not inherit the kingdom. Again, his words, not mine. So we'll get more into all that in a second, but for the context there... So we're just all clear on what exactly divination is because I understand not everyone knows. Praise God, not everyone has the background I do. Um, but the definition of divination is the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means. And I want to be clear on something. People say, oh, I can use astrology for the greater good. I'm sorry, that's not up to you to decide, okay? Okay. That's not up to you to decide that you can use astrology at your will and undermine God's, okay? Because you know what that's doing when you say, I can use it for good intentions? You're acting like the serpent in the garden. Did God really say you can't use that? Did God really say astrology is an abomination? Did God really say that if you're a sorcerer, you won't inherit the kingdom? I don't know if you if you just if you take the fruit of astrology, you can be like God. He's been telling that lie since the garden. He's not very original, okay? But that being said, no matter how you slice it, whether you think it's good or evil or whatever it is, it's divination because it's supernatural. It's trying to seek knowledge of the future through supernatural means. It's divination, and that's what astrology is. Celestial divination, okay, the actual Hebrew word for astrology means divining the heavens. That's in Hebrew. You can't get really any more cut and dry than that, folks. So now I mentioned a bit already, but as we get into specifics, what does the Bible say about divination? A lot, as a matter of fact. Um, but one of the most iconic verses, which I will read, is Deuteronomy 18 verses 9 through 14, because it essentially covers all of the basis under the umbrella of the new age or the occult or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And it says, when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead for whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord, your God, is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord, your God. For these nations, which you are about to dispossess, listen to fortune tellers and div diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do this. Okay, and here's another one. Uh, this is from 2 Kings 21. It says, uh, it, because, it, because look, it states in, in the verse I just read that, that it's abominable, right? So 
we could just finish the podcast there, but I won't. It says here, and he, in 2 Kings, and he burned his son as an offering and used fortune telling and omens and dealt with mediums and necromancers. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. So divination makes the Lord angry and righteously so, okay? Jeremiah 27, 9, do not listen to your prophets, your diviners is it diviners or diviners i'm just gonna say diviners your dreamers your fortune tellers or your sorcerers do not listen to him that to them says the lord and then he even takes it as seriously as bestowing the righteous judgment of death exodus 22 18 you shall not permit a sorceress to live and so we've already established that astrology is sorcery that's how strongly god feels about it i will get into why later because on the surface, people will say, well, your God's boring. Your God's mean. No, he's actually fair, loving, and just. We'll talk about that later. Stay tuned. But my point is there are tons, and I mean absolutely tons of Bible verses condemning this stuff. Some from the New Testament as well. For those of you that think the Old Testament doesn't matter, because I know you're out there. Um, 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 10, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice sexual homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkens, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. We have idolaters. We have the, the revilers and the sorcerers. Okay. And then we have this one, Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Basically the same thing. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish, amb selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. I just want to point out something as I was reading that verse, that a lot of what this describes here, the acts of the flesh that he says are obvious, a lot of these are actually traits that the zodiac signs gives you. Hmm, interesting. All right, let's do let's do two more. Revel because scripture is most important of all, beyond the history, origins, anything. Revelation 21:8. But as far as the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And in Revelation, particularly, it goes on to say later in that book that outside, meaning outside of heaven, are the dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Me personally, that is nothing I want to, that's nothing I want to mess with. Can you imagine being outside of the gates of heaven someday and you're standing there? Why won't you let me in? Like, was it really worth it to, to, to say that you were a cancer? or to identify as a cancer or to or to or to have a, the moon rituals was it really worth it for the fun and the cuteness because i get it like i get all of it you can't find someone on this earth that loved astrology more than i did or was more obsessed or enamored with it okay i understand the appeal thoroughly thoroughly i understand the appeal but is it really worth it to stand outside the gates of heaven and say well, you know, I just, I just really, um, yeah, I really enjoyed those moon rituals. I really enjoyed my birth chart and using that as the blueprint for my life. Uh, where did that get you? I bet that eternal torment wasn't on your birth chart. So honestly, like I always say this when it comes to using scripture is that I could always end the podcast here because what God says is forbidden should just be enough for everyone, but it's not, unfortunately, such as the nature of rebellion and demonization, might I add. Let's get into more specifics for the sake of really laying out all the information there is for, again, like I said in the beginning, the purposes of wisdom, edification, conviction, truth, revelation. Because I, like I say this with so much love, it's my prayer here that this episode will bring all of us to our identity in Christ above all things. And I want to remind any of you that watch astrology or practice astrology that may be watching or listening right now or on the replay that the gospel calls us to die to ourselves. Astrology calls you to be obsessed with yourself. So it is literally 
the antithetical gospel. On that note, I pray for all of you watching because I, like I mentioned before, you may have loved ones that are in this evil practice and you want to understand for the sake of better knowing how to minister to them, pray for them, talk to them, etc. cetera. Uh, I just really hope that this is helpful for you. Or maybe you just want to learn more because you're a fan of heaven and healing, which thank you, by the way, I pray that this would just better equip you to know how to pray and to intercede and to witness. And for those of you that were sent this by a friend, family member have come across it randomly, or you are just practicing astrology in the midst of all this, um, I want you to know it's not random that you're here. It's God's providence because he's trying to get your attention. And I pray that this would be convicting for you to repent of this practice completely and give your life to King Jesus. Because I promise you that whatever the reason was for you having gotten into astrology in the first place, and for whatever reason it is that you remain entrenched in the practice, obsessed with the practice, whatever answers it is that you're looking for, whatever affirmation, whatever solutions, all of that can be found in Jesus Christ alone. Alone. Okay, he can save you from the hamster wheel of astrology two nights. He can set you free of the bondage that keeps you tethered to the zodiac wheel. The hamster wheel. Perfect. Perfect analogy there. He can make you a new creation. Jesus can make you a new creation alive unto him. He can give you a completely new identity in him alone and crucify the person your birth chart identifies you to be. And I pray that if that's you, that you would let him. I pray that you will receive his free gift of eternal salvation and new life that comes from being saved by grace from him through faith in him and in him alone. Because y'all, I promise you that astrology is not worth what it costs you. Not in this life and certainly not in eternal life. So let's move on. What is astrology? Okay. What we just talked about, astrology is actually defined as the divination of the supposed influences of the stars and planets on human affairs and terrestrial events by their positions and aspects. So what I'm doing here is just providing you with a brief overview of of the details to, as I said before, help anyone who may not understand astrology, or maybe you do. So just bear with me there. I just am trying to break this down in layman's terms so that you can understand it better um, and so that you can understand that person in your life better. And if you're involved in this, maybe you'll hear something a little bit differently tonight. Just the goal of this whole, this, this, this live stream exposing astrology as a former astrologer who is born again in Jesus Christ to expose darkness, and to bring the light, which is him, Christ alone. Okay, so there are 12 zodiac signs and seasons. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. Um, I want to say one thing because I know that there's this whole like, oh, it's modeled after the 12 apostles. Original astrology is actually 13 or 14 signs. Modernized, it's called tropical astrology broke it down to 12. So you can't use that argument. It's a house of cards. I'm sorry. Anyway, these signs pertain to the four elements, which are elements, I'm using air quotes, earth, wind, air, fire, and air. Okay, so each sign has its own element, like Gemini is air, Virgo is, is earth, Aries is fire, that sort of thing. The primary sign that you are, I will be using a lot of air quotes. So if you're listening on the air or on the replay, I'm sorry. The primary sign is your sun sign, meaning your sun sign would be the current zodiac season at the time of your birth. And then there's also your moon sign. Remember how I said this is exhausting and extensive. So that would be the sign in which the moon was placed at the time of your birth. And then there's the rising sign, um, which is the sign that was rising on the eastern horizon at the time of your birth. So your sun, your moon, and your rising sign all represent different things. And there's so many layers to get into within that. Uh, but this is just, again, very, very layman's terms and topical to what ast astrology is so deep. Ne it's like a never-ending pool of just demonic garbage. But Basically, we'll focus here because it's it's easy enough. The sun sign pertains to your ego and motivations. The moon sign supposedly governs your emotional nature and the rising sign speaks to the energy that you put out into the world. And I used to spend all my nights and days teaching this stuff. Now, what is the immediate red flag with all of that? With astrology, you adopt 
your identity within those correlating signs that I mentioned. Your sun, your moon, and your rising. So this becomes the blueprint of who you are. And it all comes from your birth chart. And the birth chart shows the three major signs, but it also shows the placements of all the planets as well, which just adds another layer to the identity crisis because, of course, different planets represent different things and hold a particular influence, influence over you and your life trajectory, each in their own unique way so much. And then with that birth chart, guys, you can then monitor the progression of the planets, sun, and the moon over the next however many years. You can look into the future in that sense, okay, and see what will be there during what zodiac season with what retrogrades, eclipses, planetary conjunctions, squares, sextiles, triunes. It, it never ends. Um, and that all shows you what have has happened and what will happen. Or you can take all of that and you can match it to the current times to better understand your current emotional state, your financial state, your romantic state, whatever state you're in that you need the stars to justify on behalf to make sense of your grasping for straws at some sort of semblance of rationale, explanations, and purpose in your life. It's just a lot. It is, it is, an, it is someone said in the chat, a never-ending pit. It is literally a never-ending pit. Um... But it's divination through and through. And it's it's a way for you to determine what you think is the ultimate plan for your life, what you think your life plan is, based on what the celestial bodies have determined it to be. So that's what astrology is for anyone that may not really know. Um, and, and like looking back in hindsight as I'm hearing myself talk and thinking about how just deep I was into this stuff, it's... It's honestly heartbreaking how entrenched people are in astrology because did you hear that? Like that was exhausting to even explain. Imagine just living it every single day. I'm going to say again, the Zodiac wheel is a hamster wheel and just it's garbage. I just pray for so much repentance and deliverance tonight in Jesus name. Where did astrology come from? So this is fun. I love doing, I love doing these parts. So basically, um, I should have told y'all to get a notebook when you started. You can watch the replay. All historical evidence confirms that the earliest record systems or recorded systems of astrology came from Babylon. You know, like that place in the Bible re re renowned for its pride, witchcraft and rebellion against God. That place. Um, Babylon, you know, known for its pagan worship of false gods and polytheism, which is the belief in multiple gods talked about that before oh and it's workings of sorcery okay podcast stream over <laughs> um i'm really not funny sorry okay so with this polyistic religious worldview astrology developed out of the belief that since the gods in the heavens ruled man's fate gods lowercase g which the lord also warns us about you shall have no other gods be before me or beside me and so if you're practicing astrology you already do I digress. Um, it developed out of the belief that since the gods in heavens ruled man's fate, the stars could therefore reveal fortunes and the notion that the motions of the stars and the planets control the fate of people on the earth. And so the Babylonians are the ones who actually created the first ever zodiac wheel. They were the first people to apply myths to the constellations and astrology and to describe the signs of the zodiac. And then from there, the Egyptians kind of refined the Babylonian system of astrology and the Greeks shaped it into its more modern form that we know today. Um, so the Greeks and Romans borrowed some of their myths from the Babylonians and then invented their own. Uh, but the word astrology and astronomy are both derived from the Greek word for star, of course. So astrology entered Islamic culture as part of the Greek tradition and returned to European culture through Ara Arabic learning. Um, the names and shapes of many of the constellations are believed to date to Sumerian times because this was really interesting when I was doing my research, because this, the um, animals and the figures chosen, like, you know, how every zodiac sign has like an animal or figure in the constellations. Um, they were, a, they were prominent within the Sumerian times. So it's thought that if the constellations 
like uh, originated within the Egyptians, for instance, it would be like jackals and crocodiles and hippos, like those sorts of animals that they would have seen in the constellations as opposed to goats and bulls, that sort of thing. That was just a fascinating tidbit. So while the Egyptians refined astrology, the given descriptions of the constellations verify that astrology originated in Babylon, Sumerian, Babylon. So the fact that it came from Babylon, y'all, like it's literally the beginning and the end of all evidence we need that astrology is a practice that should be avoided. Not just for a Christian, but for everybody. You know, it's really funny. Just a quick um, tidbit here. I I remember when I first looked up, this was like when I was on the, on the fence of like thinking I could be a Christian astrologer. Hilarious. Um, I looked up um, where astrology came from. Just a very simple Google search. And <laughs> I remember when I first saw it, it, it just said, astrology originated in Babylon. I was like, oh no. Like, I didn't really have a great understanding of the Bible because I was a, I was a babe in the faith. I was like a, like a babe, babe, like honestly, like a fetus. I wasn't really born yet. I was <laughs> technically wasn't born again yet. I was like a fetus at the time learning. And uh, I, I knew enough about the Bible to know that you don't want anything having to do with Babylon. You just, I knew that. And I remember feeling just this, oh, this grief, like, oh man, oh, like it was something I couldn't unsee. So I pray if that's you tonight, you can't unhear that. Astrology comes from Babylon. Give it up. So to that point, it actually goes deeper because there are, of course, different elements to the astrological practice. There's understanding the world around you at large. And then there's the aspect of personal astrology, which is known as natal astrology, which revolves around the person's birth. So look, bear with me. I have to get into the gritty details for a moment to make my point. Listen close. Okay. This is so fascinating. I'm going to try and say this word right. Genie theology, genie theology is the term used for natal astrology. Now listen, genie theology or natal astrology, the study that pertains to birth, is the application of astrology to the birth of individuals in order to determine information about the nature and course of a person's life. The idea is that since the universe is interrelated, astronomical bodies exert an influence on newborn children. So the main subdivisions after genie theology are general cathartic, oh, cater how do you say that word, Mike? Which one? This one. Catar. No, it's not cathartic. Whatever. There's different subdivisions of the, of the, <laughs> I should have looked into this before I started. Totally like blowing my credibility. There are different subdivisions of astrology is what I'm trying to say. But my point in sharing that, all the subdivisions, is that it's a hamster wheel that never ends. So um, general or mundane astrology studies the relationship of the significant celestial movements to social groups, nations, or all of humanity. Electional astrology uh, determines whether or not a chosen moment is astrologically conductive to the success of course of action. So to that point, electional astrology, I almost planned my, um, my wedding date because I got engaged before I got saved. My wedding date around electional astrology. So that's fun interrogatory or horary astrology provides answers to a person's questions, usually through chart readings based on the alignment of the celestial bodies at the moment of their posing the questions. Now, why is this significant exactly? Because these are all subdivisions of astrology under like the big umbrella of astrology, which is the natal astrology, which is called genetheology. Okay. Which is jinn. We want to look at the root word of that jinn, genie, jinn. Also romanticizes Dijin, D J I N N, or as genies, okay? Genies, invisible creatures in the early religion in pre Islamic Arabia and later in Islamic culture and beliefs. The Babylonians are, of course, descendants of the Aramaic, they are Aramaic descendants. So I also found, um, from some Islamic sources that the Bab Babylonians copied philosophy and rituals from Islam, but took it all from like a monotheistic to polytheistic kind of worldview, 
So it, it was speculated in the research I was doing that they took that idea of jinn because in Islam it was more about like honoring the monotheistic God. And then with the Babylonians, they took it as like all gods with the jinn, the genies, the spirits, so to speak. So it is said that that the jinn, the spirits, they favor a snake form. Uh, funny there. But it can also choose to appear as scorpions, lizards, or as humans. They may even engage in sexual affairs with humans and produce offspring. Which, if you know anything about Nephilim or Genesis 6, sounds a whole lot like that. So, so the, what's the point? Demons. Okay? Jinn. Genie theology is natal astrology. The word jinn means spirit. An evil, perverted spirit at that. So all those subdivisions of astrology that I mentioned in Butchered come from this, okay? This literally shows us, plain and simple, that astrology is the application of demons. How demons determine not only your destiny... But everything else that was just aforementioned under the tier, right? Electional astrology, pick and choose dates according to the astrology, social groups, nations, all of humanity under this umbrella of genie theology, which is natal astrology, which is derived from jinn, which is Nephilim, which is demons, y'all. It's plain and simple. Demons determine your destiny with astrology. They tell us it's there. The, you can find this stuff yourself. The research is there. Um, now, to that point, I want to mention the zodiac signs themselves, okay? Think the symbols of astrology, and I'm sure you, you've seen them before if you've ever just walked into, like, a five below at this point, a Barnes & Noble. They're everywhere. Um each symbol that represents every sign, right? So that goes for the planets too, by the way. There's little symbols for that. Now, this is really fascinating. This is why people can't argue this stuff because this is crisp, clear, and true, okay? They're sigils. The zodiac signs are sigils. And sigils are symbols used in magic. Again, you can look all this stuff up on your own. The term has usually referred to a pictorial signature of a deity or a spirit. And in modern usage, it's, a, it's especially in the context of chaos magic, which I'll get to in a moment. So sigil refers to a symbolic representation of the practitioner's desired outcome. And the term sigil derives from the Latin word sigillum or sigilla or sigils, meaning seal, okay? Which is funny thinking about how the word says that you get sealed with the Holy Spirit. It's like that stamp, right? Same thing here. Astrology, your zodiac sign is your demonic stamp. In medieval magic, the term sigil was commonly used to refer to occult signs which represented various angels and demons which the pr practitioner might summon, by the way. So yeah, guys, the zodiac signs, the symbolism, those are pictorial signatures of the corresponding demon to each zodiac symbol. And guess what? I was wearing it all over my clothes. <laughs> and many, many people that practice astrology are. You have it on your walls. You repost it in a meme. When you're like, oh, it's my birthday. I'm this, right? There's your demon. There's, there's its pictorial signature. There's its seal, right? And that chaos magic that sigils are commonly used for, by the way, is best described as the occurrence of when a complex of thoughts, desires, and intentions gains such a level of sophistication that it appears to operate autonomously from the magician's consciousness as if it were an independent being. Do you, do you know what that means? Do you know what that sounds like? That sounds like demo demonization, that sounds like possession. So this, this embodiment of the history, the origins, the occultic ties, the undertones, the sorcery, the backdrop, and the demons of astrology 
cannot be separated from the practice in any way, shape, or form. And just to touch on this briefly, because I know it will come up in the comments because it always comes up. It's like the low hanging fruit of rebuttal is that astrology is science. And that, that look, that's just blatantly, ignorantly false. Astronomy, astronomy is a science. Astrology is literally astropsychology. Astrology is pseudo-spiritual. It's, it's a psychological mind game whereby demons have rule, reign, and dominion over your life. So I hope that I gave you some information there that you may not have heard before about astrology because when I was really digging into this, a lot of the stuff I had heard for the first time as well. And it makes me wonder what would have happened if I found it before. Probably just would have ignored it. I'm praying that doesn't happen tonight. Now let's talk about what astrology really is. We've established that it's demonic, obviously, but I want to unpack that a bit more. Um, astrology is a portal. I'm just going to say it. It is an open door. Uh, it's like a celestial Ouija board, basically. Just letting all the demons into your life. And we saw that as evidence with everything I said above, right? It's it's from Babylon. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a literal... The, the signs themselves, the symbols, are representative of the pictorial signature of every corresponding demon, right? The word, genie theology, which is natal astrology, comes from this idea of essentially the Nephilim, demons having dominion over your life, like it's demonic. And by the way, if you look up zodiac demons, which is the thing, there is a consensus uh, among astrologers that there are indeed specific demons associated with each zodiac sign. Like there's literally quizzes like, which zodiac demon are you? Like this isn't just speculation, okay? And there's a reason why God warns us against practices of divination such as astrology. It's not because he's a boring buzzkill. It's because his character is righteousness and holiness and human beings are made in his image, right? So to practice astrology is to work antithetical to righteousness and holiness. Astrology is unjust, it's evil, and it's wicked. So God gives us boundaries because we are his creation. And he loves us and he seeks our best interest. And he knows the wiles of the enemy because he knows the heart of rebellion. You have to remember this, that Satan was kicked out of heaven before Adam and Eve ever sinned in the garden. Hell was created for Satan and for the fallen angels in rebellion, not for us. But because he is a just, righteous, holy God, he had to give us the same choice of free will that he gave Satan. He had to give us the free will to choose him or to choose rebellion. And he had to establish hell as means of consequence should we choose the latter. And because Satan hates God, Satan hates how much God loves us. So Satan has been on a mission since mankind was created, as indeed evidenced in the garden, to tempt humanity toward rebellion, to tempt humanity away from God's will, from God's love, and from God's eternal presence ultimately. Because Satan wants us to suffer in hell with him for all of eternity because he hates how much God loves us and wants to break God's heart. So, so what does God do? God gives us this incredible instruction manual for life called the Holy Bible, to give us the actual blueprint, not a birth chart, of the human experience, how to navigate this entire thing. He warns, us of, he warns us of Satan and his devices. He shows us what evil looks like and how truly abominable it is. And he proves his faithfulness all throughout scripture. And of course, he sends his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to literally die for us as a way to reconcile us back to himself in such a way that could never be earned, but freely given by simple means of grace through faith. Jesus, who defeats Satan, who defeats death, who defeats darkness, right? And the only requirement from us, so to speak, is that faith. 
But that faith is all encompassing. See, because God's word says that Jesus is the word made flesh. Jesus is the Bible made flesh. And so the ultimate embodiment of faith is to believe that Bible from cover to cover, which includes what God says about astrology, which includes what God says about divination. Long way around the barn, but I got there, right? Because God warns us over and over to not partake in these evil practices. In fact, he tells us that we cannot do both. 1 Corinthians 10, 21 tells us we cannot partake of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. God tells us these things because he loves us. He heeds these warnings, not because he's unfair, but because he is so fair that he laid it all out for us, revealed to us the devices of the enemy, has given us the truth, Jesus, and promised us victory should we abide in him alone. So simple. That was a long tangent, but my point is astrology is demonic and because, and the, and the Lord warns us against it because he loves us. Okay. And because the plan he has for your life is so much more abundant than whatever demonic prophecy, any stupid birth chart could ever speak over your life. And when you really have faith in him, when you really walk in faith of him, you know that you walk by that faith not by sight. Guess what astrology, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Guess what birth charts give you? They give you the ability to walk by sight. The Lord gives you the ability to walk by faith like he wants you to because he wants you to trust him. He wants you to walk in his will and his ways. Jesus says, your faith has made you whole. He puts an emphasis on our faith, okay? And again, it, it, it's just, that was that was the Holy Spirit, not me. Um. God has a plan for your life and it's more abundant than whatever demonic prophecy the birth chart could give you. In John 10, 10, Jesus says, the thief come not but to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So you have to understand that astrology is the devil's plan for your life. And the devil's plan for your life remains unchanged. It is to steal, kill, and destroy it, both temporal and eternal. But by renouncing your faith in this evil practice and surrendering that faith to Jesus Christ entirely, he gives you life more abundantly. And that is his promise. His word will never return void. So I'm going to get more into how astrology is the devil's demonic prophecy or plan spoken over your life in a minute. But what, let me wrap up this point, okay? And that is that every zodiac sign is a demon. Every zodiac sign is a demon. So what happens when you claim the identity of that zodiac sign over you, when you come into agreement with the zodiac sign, with the birth chart, the moon cycles, whatever, you are literally yoking to a demon of that particular sign or element because you are taking its identity as your own identity. You are coming into agreement with the personality traits that the Zodiac assigns you, right? Signs you, the Zodiac assigns you. So if you say, oh, I'm an Aries, just unpredictable and full of rage, that is you yoking yourself to the unclean spirit of that Zodiac and thus, when we do so, their personality works through us because demons are spirits without a body. They need a home. By calling yourself Leo, Gemini, Sagittarius, by calling yourself that by name, you are calling yourself by the name of a demon, okay? The world, the astrological birth chart spoke the demonic prophecy of Gemini over me. And when I spoke that over myself, I was giving the spirit of double-mindedness permission to operate through me. And guess what I was? I was double-minded. Guess what I had to be delivered from? Double-mindedness. Okay? And it's similar to how T people, we'll call them for the sake of not being kicked off YouTube, T people, fill in the blank, change their pronouns or their names, right? It's the same exact thing. Because it's the demons oppressing the flesh that cause the person to manifest through the works of the flesh in that way. Oh, I'm XYZ. I'm this gender. I'm that gender. I'm they. I'm a cat. No different than I'm a Scorpio, right? By coming into agreement 
with the allocated zodiac sign the world claims that you are, you are letting a demon's identity determine yours. And something you'll notice here, that the deeper you go in astrology, the more of those traits begin to manifest, right? Jesus himself says repeatedly, as I mentioned throughout the gospels, whenever he heals someone, whenever Jesus heals someone or casts out a demon, he says, your faith has healed you. Your faith has made you whole. He shows us the emphasis and the importance of our faith, what our faith has on the outcome. So when you have faith that astrology is true, well, if your faith in Christ can make you whole, then your faith in astrology can certainly make you broken, which you will always be so long as you succumb to this practice. I promise you that. When you yoke yourself to Christ, you produce his fruit because the fruit always comes from the vine, the true vine, which is him. But when you yoke yourself to a zodiac sign, you produce the fruit of the zodiac, the sins, personality, perversion, sexuality, emotions, impulsivity, darkness, suffering, etc. because the vine of astrology is demonic and wicked. So the more and more you dive into this stuff, the further you go down the astrological rabbit hole, which quite literally never ends, the more traits of these demons manifest through you and the sins that are the result of those personality traits compound, the sins compound and the obsession with better understanding the astrology compounds because the sins have compounded or the depression has compounded or the loneliness or the double mindedness or the suffering or the cycles or the sex or whatever. And the only place you think to find the solution is the same place where you actually got the problem to begin with the astrology. And this is the bondage. This is how the devil keeps you in a celestial chokehold. Because you come into agreement with the demonic influence of astrology. You grow addicted to the spiritual narcotic of it all. But because you are made in the image of God and not living out your purpose in him, but you are rather living out the purpose of a zodiac sign or a birth chart, everything you build on the foundation of astrology is thus sinking sand because it's not built on the foundation that God intends for your life. And you don't even realize it because that's the nature of deception. And guess what? Zodiac demon or not, when you go to meet the Lord, you will be the one held accountable for those sins and for those choices, not the spirit. In fact, with astrology, you will find right? That there is seldom very little accountability at all for those sins because the traits always justify the behaviors, right? I speak from experience. Oh, I cheated on my partner. Well, I can't help it. It's just my Mars and Aries acting up again. It's just my Scorpio moon that makes me crave the most lustful, perverted, wicked desires. It's just my Gemini sun that makes me so double-minded. I never know what I want. Right. So even though astrology is totally self-obsessed and turns you into a complete narcissist, by the way, the interesting paradox is that it's always the astrology itself that gets blamed in the bad behaviors, the mood swings and the depressions, impulsiveness, whatever it is. There's no need to have a savior outside of the self because it's just the astrology. So who would ever need Jesus? Right. Because with astrology, the solution is to give yourself grace for acting up. Remembering that, oh, it's just your sign that makes you this way. Or maybe you are like me on the quote, self-healing journey. That's what I called it. And you want to clean yourself up. So you think, oh, I'll just, I'll lean into my Capricorn rising more than my Venus and Aries because why? Because you're, you're still trying to look to the astrology to clean yourself up. Even though Jesus's blood is the only thing that can wash you clean. So you try and find your strong traits in astrology to counter the negative ones, kind of like a knot trying to untie itself from the inside. And of course, this only gives credence to the self-savior complex that I always talk about whenever I expose anything with the New Age movement, the, the, the self-love gospel, because ultimately that's what it's all about is self, self, more self. 
Now, this is twofold because not only do you come into agreement with the actual demonization within the flesh that manifests itself day to day, but you come into agreement with the birth chart responsible for the assignment of that sign. And the thing is, the birth chart is a demonic prophecy. It's the demonic anointing Satan wants to manifest through your life to keep you from God's will, ways, and plan for you. The devil wants you to see your birth chart as your holy scripture or the divine blueprint, as I called it, because then, of course, what use would you ever have for an, a Bible, right? Got the blueprint you need right in front of you. So with the birth chart, you come into agreement with Satan's perverted, corrupt plan for your life. And remember, the enemy can't create. He can only distort. So there will be some truth to it, which is the fish line with astrology and every other new age practice for that matter, that there's just enough truth to hook you on the lie, to wrap you in the chain. And what I mean by that, for instance, in my own life is, um, you know, my birth chart always told me I had a gift of communication. I had a gifting of the messenger, right? Uh, my astrological placements really indicated that. And of course, that's true. Like, I, I do have a gifting for communication, as evidenced in hello. Hello, yes, what we are doing today, tonight. Hello. Um, but the devil was using my gifting. The devil was using God's gift for me to pervert it for his gain, for his purposes. It was, it was using my gifting to fulfill his will, the enemy's will over my life instead of God's. I was a new age teacher. I, I, was, a, I was a yoga teacher. I could teach without even moving my body because I was so good with my language. I was a tarot reader. I've always been a writer. I used to write these really extensive, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, new and full moon reports bi-weekly with these extremely detailed, extremely elaborate breakdowns of all concurrent astrological aspects to whatever particular moon cycle we were in. And I would present it in a format very similar to this, both on a podcast and in real life to my friends and to whoever came to our moon rituals. Uh, I, I had plans to write a self-healing book. I had plans to write an astrology book. I wanted to do um, a, a moon journal for, for the entirety of the year. And honestly, I'd probably be doing all of that if I, wa if I had never been saved, which is horrifying because the devil used my birth chart to manipulate God's actual calling on my life, which is doing the work of the kingdom of God this way, right? And so the enemy used that calling for him to steal, kill, and destroy that plan that God always had for me, that calling he always had waiting for me, so that I would not only never be saved and suffer an eternity of torment in hell, but that I would lead a lifetime deceiving others down a demonic path of new age and astrology. I just, I hate that. I hate that I did that. And I know I'm forgiven and I know I'm born again and I've been washed clean, but oh, sometimes it gets me thinking about how I sat in front of my camera and told people that they could heal themselves with the moon and spoke demonic prophecy over people's lives and pulled tarot cards for people and laid demonic hands on people and Reiki and all of the things. It just, it grieves me because now I, I really understand the heart of the father. And um, anyway, that's, that's what the devil uses our birth chart for. That's what the devil uses our birth chart for. And when we come into agreement with that, when we come into agreement with the birth chart, we again come into the, the spirits behind that. We speak the birth chart out loud and have faith in it and it gives those demonic principalities permission to act out that perverted will over our lives because we are using our free will to let it come to pass and please understand if you're listening to this please understand that i understand the appeal 
Okay, if that's you, if you're in astrology, I get it. I get why it's enticing. It gift wraps your sin in a deceptive package of self-discovery. I used to look at the full moon and give credence to whatever zodiac it applied to for the season. And the truth is, yeah, that all really affected me at the time. So if you're sitting here thinking that, I want you to know I was there too. It affected me too. It was very real. It was very real. I'm not saying it's not real. But it's real not because there is actually a divine cognizant influence that the moon or stars have over our life. But because myself back then, and perhaps you now, it's because I was giving myself, I was using my free will to come into agreement with a pagan moon deity. Not because the moon itself has any influence over me, but because I was in agreement with the moon deity, the demon, okay? I was yoking in faith to the sins and the demons of each zodiac. I was believing my identity to be realized in a satanic prophecy called astrology. And thus, yes, it did have a very real influence over me and my life for a very long time. Not because the actual stars have an influence, but because the spirits that you come into agreement with when you practice astrology do. Because that's where your faith lies. So I want you to hear me when I say if you are emotionally and physically influenced by the moon, or so you think, or you constantly affirm what your birth chart says about you is true, it's not because it is, but it's because you have come into agreement with the spirits behind that influence, and now they have you in bondage. God did not create, God did not create the sun, moon, or stars to provide a blueprint of your identity. You can find your true identity in the one who is truth, Jesus. You can and will find your true identity in the word of God, not a birth chart. You will find the ordained will for your life in the creator alone, not in the creation. God made you in his image. The devil uses astrology as a way to remake you in his Okay, astrology speaks and affirms insecurity, destruction, lust, greed, narcissism, death, sex, imbalance, shamelessness, and chaos over you when you receive its counterfeit demonic prophecy in faith. Jesus Christ speaks and affirms everlasting life and holiness over you when you receive him in faith. Now, we're going to dive deeper into this in a moment, but the thing is, God does indeed use the sun, moon, and stars for signs and seasons as a way to show us, however, the fulfillment of his biblical prophetic promises so that we may know his glory. And the devil perverts that that design and uses the sun, moon, and stars for signs and seasons as a way to lie to you to make you obsessed with yourself, to distract you from God's purpose, to wreak havoc on your life, and have you spiritually sign off on a legal contract in faith that you oblige to what your birth chart says, thus inviting the spirits and sins of the zodiac responsible for this demonic prophecy to enslave you. You are granting it permission, okay? And the truth of the matter is we are made in the image of God and for the purpose of Christ, not to be dictated by the whims of demons and sin. Our only true personal definition is found in Jesus, not some demonic handbook for your life. The Bible tells us, right, to give no place to the devil. And I'm telling you, astrology does not only give the enemy a place, it gives him complete dominion over every aspect of your life. I'm going to pause for water. That was a lot. Are y'all still with me in the chat? Stick around for a prayer at the end, okay? I've seen a couple of you in here say that you um feel something with this. Nauseous. So we're going to pray against that at the end. Um, 
we have our, I think, I don't think this is going to be a part two. Thank, thank goodness. But we're going to debunk the myth now that astrology is biblical, which is so exciting. Because when I was on the, on the fence straddling the new age and Christianity at the same time, thinking that I could be both, um, I, you, I cherry picked scripture, which is what every, the only way a new ager can justify their practice with scripture is by <laughs> cherry picking it. Uh, so we're going to just kind of go through all the things I used to use and the very popular arguments and just, just, just completely, um, annihilate that right here today. So here we have Genesis 1 14. Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. That's probably the most cherry picked one. Like I said, myself included, I took that so out of context. So we have to break down the correct context of what this means and not interpret it based on our own confirmation bias or our emotions. Um, so let's look at it logically, factually, and consistently, not arbitrarily, which is exactly what astrological interpretations are. They're arbitrary. So what does signs and seasons and days and years mean exactly? So astrology buffs will say, easy, signs, like, you know, the zodiac signs, seasons, like the, the zodiac seasons, uh, days and years, like your birth chart, but there's quite literally zero, I mean, zero, no matter how many biblical gymnastics you do around this, there's zero biblical grounds for this to be accurate. On the contrary, there are multiple Bible verses that condemn the sin of astrology, such as Isaiah 47, which I'm going to cry again. I didn't expect to get emotional, but this is, this is what the Holy Spirit used to convict me, which I will read later. Um, I want to stick on Genesis 1.14 for a minute. The signs and seasons, days and years, right? That's the point right now. It, it speaks not to zodiac signs, <laughs> not to zodiac seasons, nor measurements of your birth chart, Okay. Genesis 1.14 does not speak to any of those things. The best thing to do when you read the Bible is to read what it says, literally what it says, and to interpret scripture against scripture, not in a way that leans on your own understanding or, like I said, confirmation bias. So in this case, right, Genesis 1.14, where it says that it, the, 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 the signs, seasons, days, and years, the sun and the moon were created for. It's not the zodiac signs, the zodiac seasons, or the measurements of your birth chart. It is obvious in this case that the sun and the moon were given so we could literally count time, y'all. Our process of counting time has always involved counting revolutions around the sun, rotations of the earth, and revolutions of the moon. That's it. And what's really important to note there is that the process of counting time is one of tracking the passage of time, not predicting future events globally, nor in one's personal life, which is what astrologers use the tracking of the sun, moon, and planets for, right? Big difference. So now why did God want us to count time? Well, we must remember that God himself lives outside of time. So he doesn't count time for his own sake, but for ours. Um, so a biblically consistent assertion is that our God, we know, is a God of order. And so it would make sense that he would use time as one of the means to demonstrate his order. Being made in his image, we are people of order. You know as well as I do, you don't thrive very well in chaos, do you? Because <laughs> I don't. Um, we're, we're people of order. We don't thrive in chaos. We thrive within structure. That's partly what makes what the Bible such a blessing for us to have access to is it's quite literally the instruction manual for life. Think of yourself as an Ikea shelf and the Bible is the how-to manual, right? So as long as we do what the Bible says and live within the boundaries scripture lays out for us, we live out the abundant life that Jesus talks about in John 10, 10. So all that being said, um, God gave us the ability to mark the passage of time for our needs. Again, our needs, not our desires, which is what astrology focuses on. We needed to understand the passage of time to understand order. 
not 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 your not your demonic prophecy right so time gives us structure time gives glory to god's order for that reason all things are created for god's glory time is for that and he gave us the sun and moon and sun uh, i'm sorry he gave us the moon and sun <laughs> to measure his design as the creator and the devil perverts that with astrology by taking the moon and the sun to measure our own design of self-structure that gives glory to creation, ourselves, and the celestial bodies. I want to say that again, okay? Time gives us structure and gives glory to God's order. He gave us the moon and the sun to measure his design as the creator and the devil perverts that with astrology by taking the moon and sun to measure our design of self-structure that gives glory to creation both ourselves and the celestial bodies astrology is the devil's counterfeit copy of what god intended us to use the celestial bodies for it is clear in scripture, looking at Genesis 1.14 in correlation to everything else, that God wanted man to track progress toward the fulfillment of his promises concerning the end of the age. For example, because man could count time, Israel could anticipate God's fulfillment to bring the Messiah. That's from Daniel 9. Because man can count time, we know the length of the tribulation period, the length of the kingdom, and so forth. So until this present age ends, man will have a reason to track the passage of time, which again is an ability God given to us because we can understand in our human brain the, the sun's revolution, the earth's rotation, etc., and so since the sun and moon were given to us for the signs and seasons, days and years in this context, we can thus verify the faithfulness of God in keeping his promises written to us in his word. It's not about astrology, y'all. That verse is taken so out of context. And what's really interesting about this is that after this age does end, Revelation 21 and 22 tells us that the sun and the moon will depart. So based on the entirety of scripture, logically, factually, and consistently, like we said, the sun and moon will depart after this age ends, presumably because the tracking of years will not be necessary in the new heaven and the new earth. Okay, scripture interprets scripture. So within biblical context, that is really the God-ordained purpose of the sun and moon regarding time for the days and years. So elaborating on all that, we can break down a bit further what the Lord meant by signs in Genesis 1.14, and we can continue marrying it all together as it is all intended by the authentic design of the creator for us to do so. That's, like I said, scripture interprets scripture. So the word sign in scripture means omen or a warning that something promised is about to occur. Again, not your zodiac sign. Let's make that clear. That is demonic and irrelevant here. God has promised in his word that certain events must take place. Actually, the timing of this is great because of what's going on in Israel right now, right? Using things in the passage of time to show us the fulfillment of his prophecy. So, therefore, these heavenly objects, sun, moon, are for those signs, the word sign in scripture, again, means omen or a warning of something that is about to occur. He's promised us, God has promised us that certain events must take place in the future on earth, particularly events related to Jesus's first and second coming to earth. And God intends to use the sun, moon, and stars as signs in the sky to warn the world and prepare his people of the approach of these events. So remember, these heavenly bodies do not by themselves predict future events. The Bible itself has already given us prophecy concerning these events. The heavens simply alert us when the promised events begin to occur or will occur. 
So we contrast all of these purpo- all of these purposes with astrology, right? Astrology is a demonic inspi- is demonically inspired means of predicting the future. Astrology is demonically inspired means of predicting future events by the movement of the sun, moon, planets, and stars. It's divination, it's evil, and it is forbidden in scripture. So that's a hard no. Um, the Bible emphasized that the lights in the sky were created to be signs. They were to mark the days from the night to chronicle the months and the years. There's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that they were intended to revert, refer to the astrological signs of the Zodiac or to be used to control human destiny. Satan is the one supplying the insight to those practicing astrology or any other occultic form of divination or any occultic practice. And the only future the devil can predict are his future actions. Satan can tell us what he might do in the future, but he can't tell us what God will do in the future apart from prophecy because he knows that. He knows the word. But Satan is, is limited, is my point, to supplying prophetic information. Remember how I said that Satan will use your birth chart to pervert God's plan for your life because that's all he can do is steal, kill, and destroy So the bottom line is that the Holy Spirit will never contradict God's word and God will never contradict himself. Folks, I need y'all to hear me right now because I do see some backlash in the chat still trying to defend astrology. Those demons, those, (laughs) that bondage is just so strong. That tether is so strong. God did not give us astrology as a tool to navigate our path in life. He gave us the Bible to do that, okay? God did not give us the sun and moon to divinate a personal prophecy for our life. He gave us these celestial bodies to be watchful and vigilant of the fulfillment of his prophecies alone. God did not give us the stars to find our identity, answers and salvation in. He gave us Jesus Christ as the only solution. He is the way, the truth, and the life. God will never participate in any effort by us to learn about the future outside of what's already provided in God's word. So when we consult astrology, we are consulting Satan alone. We are tapping into the enemy's knowledge and seeking truth from him rather than God's word, literally repeating the sin of Adam in the garden. Everything about astrology is best described as when the serpent said to Eve, you can be like God, right? Therefore, any prophecy or telling obtained through astrology or other means of divination that is explicitly condemned and forbidden by God for our participation will be at best inaccurate and or worthless or at worst, it will be demonically sourced information about future activities of Satan. In either case, such predictions say nothing about God's purposes or plans and seeking after them is a dangerous and ungodly practice. So I want to be clear. That's not to say that there are not prophets of God still to this day. Um, But scripture says to test the spirits. Okay. God is not going to use a prophet to participate in sin. God is not going to use one of his people to give, to give anyone sort of prophetic insight through astrology because it is abominable to him. The divination is abominable. Okay. But scripture says to test the spirits for a reason. And that's easy enough to do with astrology because we find verse after verse where God prohibits it. Deuteronomy 419, beware, less beware. I mean, Beware lest you raise your eyes to heaven, and when you see the sun and moon and stars, all the hosts of heaven, you will be drawn away and bow down and serve them. Things that the Lord your God has allotted to all the people under the whole heaven. So, you know, when people try and defend astrology or say God gave it to us for a purpose, you're doing, you're doing exactly what this verse warns against. You're bowing down to serve them because you're, you're just not yielding to what, to what God is clear on. You're not yielding to his ways. Why are you so bent 
on, on, on holding on to this practice. Really ask yourself that. Why? Because it's self-serving. That's why. Scripture tells you to die to yourself. Die to yourself. Astrology tells you to be who you want to be. Create your life. Here's your birth chart. This is your identity. There you go, right? No, die to yourself. Be born again. So Deuteronomy 4.19 that I just read, um, basically, I go on tangents, I'm sorry. Uh, it means that the Lord has allotted the sun and the, the moon and stars and all to all peoples for our good and his glory, just like land and soil, air and water, sunshine and rain, the wonder of the stars and the moon, etc., are benefits given to all people and provided by God himself. But the fundamental mistake that the pagans made, the Babylonians that we talked about in the beginning, is that they worshipped these things. They worshipped creation rather than creator. They believed gods to live within creation rather than that all creation has been ordained and designed by the one true God. And I see some people in the comments saying, then why is astrology accurate? Why is it true? So I have answered this already. You'll have to go back and watch the replay. But just to summarize, because I feel like it's important to address this, is that that's 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 the hook, line, and sinker with astrology, is that there is truth to it because the devil can't create. That's what I was saying, that the birth chart is a demonic perversion of God's plan for your life because he can't create. He can only pervert. He can only steal, kill, and destroy. So he uses the birth chart as a demonic prophecy over your life, perverting God's actual will for you. It's accurate because how else would you be drawn to it? It's true, quote unquote, because if it, if there wasn't truth to it, you, you wouldn't have been drawn to it in the first place. The devil gives you just enough truth to get you hooked onto the lie, to get you obsessed and addicted to the lie right? Just like in the garden. He knew, you know, when, when he, when he presented Eve with the fruit, he knew that she would understand good and good versus evil, that she would, un, that she would have that hidden knowledge. There was truth to it, right? But what was the lie? You can be like God. You can't. So, so he hooked her with the truth to get her to bite the fruit into the lie. That's what he, he, his, his, his methods have never changed. Okay. So astrology is no different. Um, and then of course we have Deuteronomy 18, which I read at the beginning, Ezekiel 13, nine. So my hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and utter lying divinations. They will have no place in the council of my people, nor will they be written down in the register of the house of Israel, nor will they enter the land of Israel that you may know that I am the Lord God. And now this is the one, this one has a special place in my heart. So Isaiah 47, 13 through 15, this is God speaking to the, the Babylonians. He says, stand fast in your enchantments and your many sorceries with which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you may be able to succeed. Perhaps you may inspire terror. You are wearied with your many counsels. Let them stand forth and save you. Those who divide the heavens, who gaze at the stars, who at the new moons make known what shall come upon you. Behold, they are like stubble. The fire consumes them. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. No coal for warming oneself is this no fire to sit before such to you are those with whom you have labored who you, who have done business with you from your youth they wander about each in his own direction there is no one to save you so i um when i first read that i really um <laughs> yeah godly sorrow i felt godly sorrow for the first time i think that is when the holy spirit when he really washed over me and i realized what sin was that was the first time i understood that i was a sinner 
you know, because I had a revelation of Jesus before that. But like I said, toward the beginning, I was like more of a fetus then. I wasn't actually born again. Um, I had an understanding that Jesus loved me and I wanted, I wanted him. And I, and I thought that I could use him as a tool in my tool belt, that the Bible was just like something else I could add to my new age arsenal. Great. Another divination tool. And, uh, yeah. So I read this verse. Someone sent this to me, King Cat 2.0, Kevin on Instagram. Um, he sent this verse to me because I asked him like, oh, if God gave us the sun and the stars, can't we just use it for his glory? And can't we just use it? Can we use astrology? And he sent me this. And Holy Spirit just did what he does. He just, he convicted me. You know, the, the word says that, Jesus says that my sheep hear my voice. And I think that's, that's really, I don't know if it's the first time, but it's the first time I, I, I was, I was shepherded in discipline by the Holy Spirit. It was, it was the first time that Jesus disciplined me, that I, that I had that, that fatherly loving sense of, you know, discipline. It's just a great word for it, but it was, it was convicting. It was really convicting and I couldn't turn back. That was the next day I called my best friend who had interceded for me for 20 years and I, and I was sobbing and I was like, I don't know what's going on. I can't do astrology anymore. I can't do yoga anymore. I, I have to stop with this podcast. No more rituals. And uh, that same week, I threw everything out. I burned everything. And I I sat in front of my old podcast camera. And I told that audience I was done. And then a couple months later, I started heaven and healing. And here we are. So, yeah, that verse, I, I just really... I really just pray that that verse would convict many, many people that are in this demonic practice because it's great. You know, the Holy Spirit really did a work in my heart when he first showed me this verse. Yeah, he never misses, Nina. So while we may watch the heavens for signs and omens confirming God's word, like, you know, in Revelation 6, 12, it says the sun turning black and the moon turning to blood and the stars falling from the heavens all lovely things described in Revelation 6, 12, as I said, we should not turn to them for any other source of information. Not only for the horrifying fact that astrology is a literal doorway for demonization and fulfills Satan's evil perverted prophecy over your life, but what's worse, okay, what's worse than the consequence that this practice has on you is the way God absolutely abhors it and explicitly condemns it in his word. So it's not a consequence only to you. It, it is a, a grievance to him. And that's, that's the conviction. Realizing you are breaking the heart of God. So all that said, all biblical context explained, I do want to acknowledge the star of Bethlehem. Because that's another low-hanging fruit, just like astronomy versus astrology. Um, it's a low-hanging fruit of justification that people use to uh, practice. So I guarantee that folks who just knee-jerk to react to this video without watching it are going to go straight to the Star of Bethlehem. That always happens. So we'll wait and see. So what about the Star of Bethlehem? So there's a couple different facets to this and we can examine it from different angles. Um, one, so the fact that the Magi indeed recognize the star's significance implies, this is one, this is one vantage point of the argument, implies that they practice astrology, but it does not imply that we should. <laughs> um, this is similar to the Witch of Endor story in that context, which there's a lot of debate surrounding with Saul raised from the dead or not. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because if, if he was, it was God's choice to do that for a specific reason, documented in scripture by his will for his purposes, but he still condemns us from participating in mediumship. You see, God can do whatever he wants. You can't. So just because God can do something doesn't mean you can. And he protects you from these kinds of things, and rightly so. However, God does not need protection. That's why he can do whatever he wants. Okay, so the same is true for this case. Just for argument's sake, if we can speculate that the Magi were astrologers, that does not discredit the inherent truth 
that the practice of astrology is explicitly condemned in Deuteronomy, Kings, Jeremiah, Amos, like all of it, Galatians, all of it. And the author of Genesis demythologizes it by describing the heavenly bodies merely as lights created by God. So we all previously mentioned, we previously mentioned all that thus far, but it's worth continuing to note it, um, what the signs and seasons actually are. Now, this doesn't mean that God can't use them as signs of major events in his plan, like we said, because he is omnipotent and can do so if he chooses. Thus, in the book of Joel, God states, I will give portents in the heavens. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. In Acts, Peter interprets this in terms of the dawning of the Christian age, Acts 2, 14 through 21 specifically. And it is noteworthy that darkness covered the land. The sun shall be turned to darkness, using air quotes, during the crucifixion, Matthew 27, 45. And there was a lunar eclipse that made the moon appear red on April 3rd. AD, 30, uh, AD 33, which is like the probable date of the crucifixion. I forget where I got that source from. But anyway, my point is, if God chose to mark the death of his son with an unusual celestial sign, then he might have done the same to mark his birth, right? With a star. And he may have further allowed the Magi to recognize this significance based on the ideas present in their culture, what they understood. However, this would be an exceptional event and not an endorsement of the practice of astrology in general. The stars are not div divinities that rule our lives and they have no power over us. God may providentially use them as markers of certain events in the plan of his ages, but that does not mean we can infer things about the events of our own lives from them. I don't know how many times I can stress that point. Um, now, that's just one kind of vantage point. The other, this is, the other point of that would be an instance where we really need to look at scripture as a whole rather than cherry pick once again. So while there could be an argument made for point one, I think that there is more a biblical basis for this point personally. Saying again that for, for argument's sake, right, that the astrology, that the um, wise men did use astrology to learn that this particular star signified the birth of Jesus, right? Say that happened. Then why could they not also learn through astrology that Bethlehem was the place of the birth? Why did they have to ask Herod, where is he that is born the king of Jews? You know why? It's because they were following prophecy to get that to, to get to that star. They were following prophecy, not astrology. How we keep talking all throughout the debunking of astrology being biblical, how God uses the celestial bodies to fulfill his plans. This is no exception here. It's the same thing. There is no such thing as biblical astrology, even in this case, in the star of Bethlehem, because, you know, God communicated supernaturally with those searching men. He did so when he warned them not to go back to Herod after they had seen baby Jesus in Matthew 2, 12, right? So initially the wise men who saw Christ's star were likely influenced by the writings of Daniel. Daniel 9 verses 24 through 27 specifically. Um, and from that description, the wise men could have calculated the time of the appearance of the, of Messiah, the prince, and the divine finding of the star would only confirm that this time had come. Also, they had Numbers 2417 to reference, where the prophet Balaam said that a star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter to shall rise out of Israel. So I think this is much more of a likely explanation of the Magi following the star of Bethlehem, especially given that fatal flaw that they had to ask Herod for the specific location. They were following prophecy, right? Not astrology. They wouldn't have had to ask the king for the specific location if they were following astrology. Um, they were just simply interpreting the Old Testament. Um, my cats are meowing at the door. 
So they were they were they were fall, interpreting prophecy given to them from the previous writings of the Old Testament. Not I, I think this is much more probable than God making the exception for astrology being used to find Christ's birthplace. But I wanted to give the two vantage points there. So um I know that was all like a lot of a lot. Let's kind of wrap up here. I'm actually really happy that I managed to get all this out without breaking it up into parts because that's just more sloppy. Um, so listen, I I, I just want to share my heart here. I Since I came out of agreement and repented for the sin of astrology, since I was delivered from the identity of a birth chart and gave my life to Jesus Christ, trusting all my faith in him alone, I am no longer influenced by the moon, no longer influenced by the zodiac season or what that particular chart claimed over my identity. I am no longer addicted to horoscopes, praise God. I'm no longer addicted to moon ceremony rituals as a way to try and feel free um, because I walk effortlessly in freedom knowing that I am who Jesus says I am because of who he is, okay? Okay. The person that a birth chart said I was died on the cross with him. And I have been resurrected as a new creation in new life in his will. I am born again. Hallelujah. So if that's you watching or listening, that's my prayer for you too. Um, is that is that you would, you know be born again, that you, that you would repent for this. And more importantly, that you would understand that it's the Lord's desire for your will and for your life that you would not perish, that you would be born again and made alive unto him. And as a former diehard astrologer who was absolutely addicted, obsessed, and enamored with it all, I tell you with so much love that God puts up these guardrails, laying out these boundaries of sin, including astrology, not because he's unloving and boring, but because he loves you so much that he doesn't want you to drive off a cliffside into the bondage of demonization that astrology and all other sins of demonate or of divination rather will unquestionably enslave you to. You have the free will to choose right now. Will you continue to agree to the chaos and destruction that astrology speaks over your identity and life and continue living for those demonic lies, yoking to those spirits and justifying the correlating sins? Or will you turn from that? Will you repent from that? And receive in faith the promise and identity of righteousness, eternity, priesthood, peace, love, and joy that Jesus Christ died for you to have and promises that you will have when you live unto him. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. His word will never return void. So with that, I want to say thank you, Lord for for what you've done in my life and thank you lord that you did give us the sun and the moon and the stars and as as an understanding of your glory alone as the the fulfillment of your prophecy and in jesus name i rebuke the lies from the enemy that corrupts the celestial design for the glory of self instead because that's all astrology is it gives glory to the self it's the self-love gospel which is antithetical to the gospel of Jesus Christ, where life is found. Astrology is death. Just saying. I want to close in prayer. Um, I want to first say this because it's, it's on my heart. So I didn't plan to say this, but I want to say it. Um, if you have new age stuff in your house, if you have received like deliverance prayer, if you've repented, if you're walking with the Lord and you still have new age stuff in your house, you have to get rid of it because they're doorways. Okay. Um, it, they're just doorways, right? Like when I first came to the Lord, I got rid of everything, but then there were still a couple things here and there that I thought, well, it's okay to keep that. You got to get rid of it all. There were a couple crystals that I never used, so to speak on my, in my altar, in my demon practices that I ended up getting rid of. 
and a lot of stuff stopped at that time and even though I had them for a year you just got to get rid of it all if you have old astrology notebooks like like I did I used to write down like all my um you know intentions and releases at the new and the full moon get rid of it burn it get rid of everything if you even have like an inkling of like a, a thought could this be yes just just get rid of it like nothing is worth keeping that could be disturbing your peace right um everything in the spirit realm is extremely legalic so if there is even like a sliver of a door open they're going to use that as means to be there because they can because it's it's the permission we, we grant right jesus like i said always puts an emphasis on our faith your faith makes you whole so whatever whatever you're you're putting your faith in and if there's like a resistance and when you want to keep things that's that's a that's a faith aspect because you don't have enough faith to just trust that you can discard it you don't need this stuff so get rid of it um I, i'm gonna do eventually a whole live stream on getting rid of stuff someone said burn it all in jesus name amen so i want to just pray for anyone that was involved in astrology or currently is involved in astrology and wants to like really repent for it now um i i want to first say and just invite you to just close your eyes and just come before the lord maybe you have to pause this video and take a couple minutes to talk to him maybe you you know you watch this later but it just take a couple minutes to just talk to him and tell him your heart tell him what you're convicted of and tell him that, that you trust him and that you love him and that you know he loves you because he does he loves you so much um he loves you so much that he that he sent his only begotten son he he sent his son jesus christ to stretch out his arms on a wooden cross and bleed out for you even knowing that you might not ever choose him right so it he loves you there's no question about that and and he's forgiven you you know he's forgiven you that the cross is an act of forgiveness so today you you can you can receive that grace by faith that's what it says you are saved by grace through faith alone so if you have not received that free gift of salvation know that it's right there and all you got to do is take it just say yes lord right in revelation it says that he stands at the door and he knocks so he's knocking at your heart right now you just got to let him in because he loves you so much and it is not his will for you to perish his word says that it is not his will for you to perish so i would implore you that if you've never if you have not given your life to christ if you have not if you have not received him in faith but you're feeling that conviction right now and you just want to turn this video just turn this video off for a couple minutes before we start the prayer that you would just do that now and just take that moment with him and let him in your heart and just tell him that you love him okay because it's not it's not saying that prayer that gets us to heaven but it's the faith it's the faith behind the prayer okay it's the grace that is bestowed to us through that faith and so now if you are if you know after you have done that taking some time to do that or if you're someone who is is born again but you maybe have still meddled in these practices or you've never really truly taken the time to actually repent for them and you know that there's some there's some ties there maybe there's some bondage there there's some identity there still there's some you still play with it a little bit or something you just gotta take a moment now again if you have to pause this come back to this later you know pause this and and just say Lord, like I renounce astrology and, and, you know, call out that Zodiac sign by name. Like, Lord, I renounce, I renounce Gemini. I renounce this. I renounce the spirit of Gemini in Jesus name. I just come out of agreement with that Zodiac. I come out of agreement with my birth chart in Jesus name. I come out of agreement with the spirits that I have yoked to and through, through claiming their identity over my life with astrology in Jesus mighty name. And now because the word, the word tells us and Jesus says that greater, greater things than these you will do when you have his Holy Spirit, the authority of his Holy Spirit as his daughter, as his disciple with his Holy Spirit. I'm just speaking to those spirits of the Zodiac. And I'm telling you right now that you have no dominion. You have no power over this person's life. And in Jesus name, I'm commanding you to leave now in the mighty name of Jesus. You are done. Okay. The identity of this person, they are a blood bought daughter or son of Jesus Christ. They belong to God, the father, and you have no place here. They are done with you. They have renounced you. They have come out of agreement with you. And so I command you in the 
mighty name of Jesus to go right now, to leave them, get out of their life now in Jesus' mighty name, and you will never come back. You will not bring seven more in Jesus' name because this house is a temple of the Holy Spirit. This body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are messing with God's born again child. It was a new creation. You do not have permission to speak that death of that old identity, that old man, that birth chart over them anymore in Jesus' name. We just, I just come in agreement with my brothers and sisters in Christ right now that have decided to lay this before the foot of the cross. And we say no more. We repent for this. We renounce this in Jesus' name. And so every spirit of the zodiac, it may be tormenting this person. I command you to leave by the sound of my voice now in the power and authority of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Go, go in Jesus' name and never come back. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're beginning to minister or work on this person. Thank you, Lord, that you are filling them, that you are filling them because you already live within them, Lord, within their spirit. But thank you that you are, that you are coming, uh, you are coming upon them right now, Lord. Thank you that you are coming upon them from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord. Thank you that you are allowing them to feel you, that you are allowing them to feel you filling them right now with just a fresh anointing, Father. Thank you so much that, that you sent your son and that he sent his spirit to us. Lord, thank you for the comforter of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for these children of God. Lord, thank you for the great work that you have done. Thank you for giving us all power and authority over the dominion of darkness. Thank you that these spirits of the Zodiac have no power. Thank you that you defeated the spirits of the Zodiac at the cross in Jesus name and that we are healed by your stripes. And Father, I pray that every person listening to this would walk in freedom, that they would walk in the freedom that you have promised them that yeah, deliverance is great. Deliverance is necessary. It's having those spirits cast out in a way 100% your will but now it's their responsibility to walk in the mind renewal Lord that your New Testament instructs us of they must walk in the freedom they must appropriate the freedom of the cross in their lives in faith Lord so I pray that you would draw each of these sons and daughters of yours to your word every day that you would allow them to store that word up in their hearts so that they may not fall victim to the enemy, victim to temptation, victim to the flesh, Lord, that they really will embody what it means to die to themselves and to walk alive and free unto you, Father. And I just pray all of these things in so much gratitude and thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So if you're listening on the replay, this is the part where we go into the live chat. You'll have to go onto YouTube and watch the rest of the video. Um, how was that prayer for y'all? How many people are on? Sweet. It's awesome. I really pray that prayer was received. Um, if you have any questions in the chat, feel free. What did you think of the episode? What did you think of the prayer? Mike, bring in the dancing lobsters. That means the cats. Mm. I almost forgot. I always forget. Oh, look what it does when it... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Um, so feel free to ask your questions. Uh, I know, I know, like there's like a little bit of a lag time from what I'm seeing and and what you're seeing. So I. Oh, a bit of deliverance occurred for me. Praise Jesus. You've been delivered. Praise God. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And like I said, if if you have stuff in your house too, get rid of it. Okay? Get rid of it. Get rid of the astrology stuff. That includes tapestries, by the way. I used to have tapestries of like the zodiac signs. My whole house was 
an altar to the zodiac demons i kid you not um so feel free to ask your questions in the meantime if you do feel led please um consider partnering with the ministry i do have a pinned comment here in the chat ways that you can sew in become a monthly partner or contribute one time also in the description of this video as well once we're out of the live different ways to do that heaven and healing is entirely crowdfunded so means a lot um if you were fed tonight don't just dine and dash <laughs> that's an isaiah line i'm also going to put a qr code up on the screen so oh wow and it's before 10 o'clock too oh praise god that i got this all done in pretty good timing Is Taylor going to be on the podcast? Yeah, I'll have Taylor on again. I I do, if you don't know already, I have two episodes out with Taylor already. You can find that on this channel. Um, What else do we have? Your skin is so beautiful and you look so young. How do you do it? I always say that the Holy Spirit is the best makeover I've ever had. It's true. But honestly, I've always had really, I've, I was just blessed with really great skin. But I fully believe that you can have someone lay hands on you and deliver you from infirmity. Do you believe in keeping sacramentals in the house? What do you mean by that? Like rosaries and stuff? I do not have any, I'm not Catholic. I don't have any rosaries. How old do y'all think I am? Someone asked how old I am. <laughs> how old do you think I am? I would love to hear that. And then I'll tell you. Someone said, please pray for my mom. She has been master Reiki practitioner for years. She has been tormented by these demons for decades. Please pray for her deliverance. I'm so sorry, sis. You got to fast for her. Fasting is like 911 prayer. I didn't know there was a December core retreat. Yeah, it was just a lot for me um, being pregnant. I was really led by the Lord to not travel without my husband being pregnant. Look at all the guesses, Mike, of my age. Let the kitties in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said age eternal. <laughs> True. I am 29. Kittens, come see mommy. Come see. She's squeaking. Here she is. <laughs> what do I do if I know someone who needs deliverance but I don't know anyone who can do it you can do it God gave you the same Holy Spirit as he gave anyone else that that's a lie from the devil but I get it I get it it's remember it's faith right Jesus always talks about faith you have to have faith that what he says is true. If he says he's given you his Holy Spirit, he's given it to you. That you can heal the sick. You can cast out demons. Not because of you, but because of him. And you know what? They might not get delivered in that moment. But they're definitely not going to get delivered if you don't pray for them. Yeah, say hi, Jim. I wish she would meow into the microphone so badly. Where's Ruby? Ruby! Ruby, like, never comes onto the chat. She's very... But this is such their personalities because Jem is so... Um, 
she's just very like needs to be the center of attention at all times and ruby is just like very reserved for me only so this is very very on point hi ruby can you bring can you put her on the desk so i can show everyone I'm gonna switch out cats. Any questions, y'all? I'm gonna stay on for another like few minutes. <laughs> and here's Ruby. Thanks y'all for watching. I have an astrology tattoo and I really want to get it removed, but it's very expensive. Can I be delivered from the zodiac spirits before it's removed? Yeah, you don't you don't need to get it removed. Um you you got to believe that that has no power over you because it doesn't. You're a new creation and if honestly if anyone says like, oh, you're a blah, blah, whatever the sign is, you can just say, no, actually, I was saved from astrology by Jesus and I am not a blah. My sign is the cross. It's actually a line I forgot to say. <laughs> um, yeah, I, don't, don't, don't think that like your skin is cursed or something because you're made new. Um, if you have the means to cover it up and you personally feel convicted to do that, then do it. Um, if you pray to the Lord for him to make a way financially, you know, he, he's a God of miracles and nothing is out of, nothing is out of his limits. Um, luckily I never got my astrology sleeve that I planned on getting. So first time listener, thank you very much. You're welcome, Sabrina. Thank you for watching. My socials. Um, so I will, my Instagram is in the description. I will type it here as well. Yeah, I agree with that. Tattoos mark past sins. Now show the power of your testimony. I totally agree with that. I think that if you're someone that's like really tatted up, that it's such a testament of, of we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the Lord and the word of our testimony. So use it as the word of your testimony. Bye. You're welcome all. Thanks for being here. It's your first year not celebrating Halloween. Praise God. <laughs> can you talk about the authority we have in Christ so people can be set free? Yeah, I, um, it's really funny you said that. Because I got I got a massive like revelation from the Lord a couple nights ago when I was cleaning about a live stream and he just used that message from you, Ronan, I believe, um, to confirm. <laughs> Please do this. During this podcast, the Lord told me to throw away a video game where the character has zodiac symbols on her dress. So good. people think it's like so extreme like oh do we really have to throw this to what's like you don't have to but like why not <laughs> why not nothing for me is worth disturbing my peace especially because i have a baby girl coming i i don't want anything in this house like the thought of a spirit messing with my child makes me in, infuriated 
And if there's like even a, a chance that there's anything that I have that could be like an open door to that, like, bye, it's gone. And your prayer will say with me, well, God bless, God bless you too and praise the Lord. What's your daily schedule in the word? I'm struggling to stay consistent. Um, uh, I know it stinks to hear, but you just got to get up earlier. Like whenever I struggle with that, it's because it's because I'm not prioritizing it. You got to think like how much time did you just spend on this podcast? And like I'm saying that as the person who was hosting it, but like <laughs> you could have been in the word. Like there are things that we could always do that and we spend our time scrolling instead or being fed our theology through youtube instead of the gospel and so you just got to start prioritizing it something i'm working on now is um actually creating my own schedule at home video on eating disorders constant eating disorder thought even during recovery and regular cycles, thoughts won't go away and recovery waking is terrible. <sighs> yeah, I will do a video on that for sure. Do you see my cat? She's... She put her paw in my water. <laughs> Gemini, no one wants to see your butt, please. <laughs> please <laughs> discipline is key to discipleship that's really good like I can't read the screen <laughs> she's in the way show them show them your cute little face show them your face <laughs> told you she likes to be the center of attention what to do if someone in the same household won't let go of things like astrology books um yeah you gotta pray it also depends on like your role in the household like if you're um if you're a husband like you kind of have the authority of your wife to throw it away um if you're a daughter and it's like your parent and you don't have that authority but you can anoint it with oil and you can pray and you can fast and you can thank the lord that he's faithful to complete the good work that he starts in his people and trust that it will be done I can't read the chat. You're standing in front of it. Come here, Jim. All right. <laughs> She's so sweet, isn't she? She loves to be the star. Is smoking weed a sin? Yeah. And that's a portal. If you have to ask, it's probably a sin. I'll say that. Um, any insight on spiritual tax and sleep, even after tossing all unholy materials, praying, etc. Honestly, that's something I struggle with sometimes too. Um, there's definitely like, it's a long story, but I know that there are other teachers out there that have a lot of information on that. I would recommend seeking someone else out for that right now because it's something I'm still dealing with. She is sitting right in front of the camera. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> Can you screenshot that on your phone, Mike? Oh, uh, weed is, weed is demonic. Weed is so demonic. What do you think about wearing a cross around your neck when so many do the same, but not for a genuine reason? Yeah, um, I don't know. I like to wear a cross because it, it, if the Lord ever told me not to, I would stop. But I like to wear it because it's a sign of my life in him and his sacrifice and what he did 
um but i know people wear it just like as like a fashion statement which call them out on it just say like hey do you know what that means opportunity to share the gospel <laughs> that cat stared right into my soul <laughs> <laughs> Ruby's down here again. Oh, I'm sorry. I scared her. I just wanted to pick you up. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, this was fun. Um, I always spend like 15 minutes in the chat. Uh, my mom is here, and uh, it's her last night here, so me and my husband are going to go downstairs and uh, just probably eat some dinner. Can you donate through YouTube? Not yet. Um, YouTube is giving me a whole heck of a lot of trouble right now when it comes to payments. Long story, but luckily I have like five ways that you can donate. So as soon as we click out of here, go to the description. There, I have donor boxes preferred, monthly partnership, but I also have Stripe, which you can use for Apple Pay. Um, I have Venmo, I have PayPal, and I feel like I have one more thing. But Thank you all for watching tonight. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And again, if you do feel led to contribute as that person asked, I really appreciate it. Thanks y'all for watching. All right, how do I end this? <laughs> oh, it's still live. Oh, we'll let the camera come back on Gem and then we will. We'll end it with her. Because it's a nice way to end the stream. And I heard a lot of people in the chat during the broadcast, they were saying um, they were so excited about her. There she is. <laughs> Everyone say goodnight to Jem. Ruby's here too, but she's shy. God bless you all. Jesus loves you. Good night. <laughs>